in godly dating relationships, if the person you are dating does doesn't display all of the fruits of the spirit, is that a red flag that the relationship may not be of God? You know. Uh, good question. Um, think yes and no. Just just because a person is not exhibiting. Doesn't mean because no one's exhibiting perfectly all the time. All of that, all exactly. the time. So the question would be: Is was the person sent to you by God? It has been confirmed by Him. That's number one. Yeah. Number two is the relationship with God in it is going to work you guys out, right? Yeah. One thing I learned about my relationship: I can only go by what I what I do. Right. My fiance is probably the complete opposite of me. <laughs> Complete opposite. I mean, girly girl, girl. You know what I'm saying? Like dainty. You see, I'm like, 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 like roses and castles. Like, right? You see what I'm saying? Um, stern, not stern, direct, very direct. I'm only child. She's the baby of our family. Yeah. She has siblings. I have. I had siblings, but I didn't. I didn't stay in the same house as them. Yeah. Um. She came from a big family. I came from a very dysfunctional. Every family has dysfunction, but mine, mine wasn't as close. Yeah. Her family, everybody had to cook out. That's, I can't wait to have. So, to have but what I realized was, I couldn't expect her to have everything, nor could she mm -hmm. expect from me. But the relationship with God in it began to rise up the levels. My love level has increased a few notches. The joy has increased a few notches. Like 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 my gentleness, my self control has raised a notch. Was I perfect in all areas? No. Mm -hmm. But in the four years, five years of us dating and being together, you naturally begin to see dreams grow. So I wouldn't go into a relationship expecting them to be at a hundred at love. Yeah. You gotta look at yourself and ask yourself first, you where am I in the fruit of the spirit? <laughs> because that'll give you the right lens to say, you know what, yeah. I'm not gonna judge that person. Now, 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 there are certain things they must have in order for the relationship to function. There's a certain level of love they need to have, yeah. certain level of joy. Now, 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 are they gonna have 100 percent in all areas? No. But should they have a certain balance, mature level of each? Yeah. You don't wanna you don't wanna date a man who who, who got two percent self control. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You want somebody at least, at least in a high caliber. Let me let me read the question again. In a godly dating relationship, if the person you are dating doesn't display all the fruits of the spirit, is that a red flag that the relationship may not be of God? Um, just a yellow flag. Just take it slow. Before you go deeper, before you get your emotions involved, before you get your mind involved, because some relationships start and your mind get involved, your emotions get involved. And then when you actually see the spirit of the person, you so emotionally, mentally attached to them that you don't even want to leave now. Yeah. You start making excuses for their lack of self-control. Well, I can change it. No, you can't change. So what, what you need to do is to make sure first, if God has confirmed his relationship, then God's going to ensure that spirit in them, this fruit in that person will continue to grow. Yeah. If God ain't confirm it, I wouldn't go after it. Yep. If God ain't confirm it, I wouldn't allow myself to be pursued by it. And now Josh, they'll say, well, how do you know God confirms something? You know God confirms something when you know for a fact that that first off, you can remember the carpet you were sitting on, standing on. You can remember, it was so vivid. When God speaks to you, it's, it, a presence has a distinction. Yeah. When the presence of God hits you and confirms something about you, you can't shake it off. That's number one. Now, some people be like, well, I felt that now. You probably said gas. <laughs> The second step is, is when you allow yourself time to pray and seek God about it, right? Yeah. Deeper. You, you've allowed your relationship to grow in community. And then over time, you begin to see God confirming down the road. Confirmation, I don't like talking about confirmation too much because there's a lot of different ways that God does it. And I don't have Huh? Yeah, so I'll leave my hands But man, make sure it's confirmed by God first. Then the Holy Spirit in that person, the Holy Spirit in you will continue to rise the levels. Yeah. But if that person is subpar in eight of the nine, nine of the nine, even five of the nine, you're talking about subpar, right? Yeah. And don't even get that, don't even get into it. Alright, so second question. Let's get out of here for this thing. Yeah, I'm like, hey, well, of course I'm for good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh yeah, uh yeah, e, yeah underscore e black has two questions. The first question 
is how do you know if you are going through a season of singleness or if you are called to singleness? Hmm. How do you know if you're going through a season of singleness or if you're called? Um, it's an easy, easy answer. If you don't have a desire to be married. It's that simple. If you completely do not have... We're not talking about a bitter, non-desire. We're not talking about I'm hurt and I'm abused. We're talking about you just like, I just don't, I just don't feel like I'm supposed to get married. Yeah. Those who have a desire to be married, you, God, God will gift you yeah. with marriage. See what I'm saying? But um, how do you know if you are going through a season of singleness? You single? Next question? Next question. If you're called, or if you're called to singleness, God ain't going to call you to something that you don't have a genuine desire for. Yeah. We're not talking about a sinful desire for. Yeah. Like, like when you see, you, 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 like God ain't the type of God going to be like, I know you want to get married, but no. I know you want to have children, but no. Even John the Baptist's mom was so thankful to God, you took the reproach away from people from me. Because she, she was hurt. Yeah. She genuinely had desire, but God had another purpose. So, yeah. next question. Next question. Um, is it possible that God's spouse for me will cheat? Hmm? That I, you don't even what? Is it possible is that it God's like spouse for me will, will cheat, cheat on me during our marriage? marriage? Or does infidelity only take place when you marry on your own? I mean, he can't control his will, but... Let me, um, but, listen. Dang, cuz. Um, is it, is it possible that God's spouse for me will cheat on me during our marriage? First off, you got to get that out your mind. Yeah, don't... Because if you keep thinking all. that way, then your husband won't be free to live. And you may... Check and I said, you may, it, you, may, you may create a culture or a climate that may put too much demonic temptation on him that may feel like, well... If she think I'm cheating, I might as well go ahead and do it. I might as well go ahead and do it. Like, like you don't want to be the type of woman that, that or man, let's go for men or women, yeah. where you where you give maximum punishment to a misdemeanor crime. Where you give the feel that I'm on eggshells. And if I do this wrong, I got 25 years to life. Like, man, like I'm at the gym. With who? Doing what? <laughs> I'm at work. You got I gotta the man the man can put a the man can put a 24-hour webcam surveillance wherever he goes. And because you have that mindset, you're going to think that I think he's cheating. Yeah. So if you think that, you're going to create attitudes and, and anxiety that's, that's going to give demonic access into that man's life yeah. that will bring and could possibly bring cheating, maybe not physical cheating, but emotional cheating. Where that person begins like, I'm just not happy. Yeah. I feel like I'm walking on eggshells. And yeah. then this little Kelly or little 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 Miranda, little Betty Boo come around yes. Yes. and is offering your man what you're not giving him because you got the mindset of thinking that he possibly will. Yeah. Then that man you you, you put too much pressure. That's yeah. like if but you But then you'll be able to see that too outside of it. You, yeah. I should I I'm gonna I'm gonna see that coming a mile away in a relationship. But, but there's people who married great in the beginning and then stuff just fall apart. Like things were good, things were godly. Yeah. But you gotta understand that marriage is not the solver of your problems. It's a magnifying glass of your problems. And it's only for mature people. And when you know that, like when I'm getting, by me getting married, I went through counseling, I went through deep prayer, I went through fasting. I'm so scared of me that I always check on me. I'm quick to call for a counseling session. Yeah. Quick to check on me. Because it's two humans trying to do this miracle. Marriage is a miracle. Outside of Adam and Eve in yeah. the Garden of Eden, yeah. marriage is a miracle. Yeah. Which means for marriage to work, it's a miracle. That's why I got to always make sure that I'm a servant leader, that I'm selfless, that I tend to her needs without any expectations, that I, got, that I have that as a mindset going in, and that I implement a system to ensure that I don't think beyond the bumpers. When you don't do that, when you open the door for anything. Yeah. But it takes a season of singleness and maturity to grow, to understand the right perspective you need to have of marriage. So when you get in marriage, you'll think of yourself more accurately. You will be a servant. You will have no expectations. You won't put. You won't allow your wife or husband to walk with eggshells and all that kind of stuff. What's the second part of the question? Is it possible that God's spouse for me will cheat on me? Listen, 
or does infidelity take only take place when you marry on your own, like gets married? I mean, anytime you I do think, anything without outside of God, you have a greater chance for something to yeah, happen. But at the end of the, end of the day, people with mess ass for whether or not God gave it to you or not. That Adam gave, you know, Adam God and Eve gave, were both created, created by God, yeah. and Eve still chose to, still, Eve to, still to Eve chose, which means that should keep you on guard right. yourself. Yep. That means you should look at yourself and be like, you know what? I have right now. If I if I lean to my carnal nature, I will cheat. Yeah. It's that simple. If I stay in my renewed self and I stay in God and I and I die in my the moment the moment your devotion begins to wane over a period of time, yeah. you ain't gonna have no discipline to keep you sharp. Right. The last question was real long, huh? Yeah. So I'll read it for you, man. <laughs> Any advice on guarding your mind? I tend to take things personal. If something if something happens to someone, I try to imagine myself in that situation, which can just scare me and birth fear. I don't know And I have to go ahead and tell you. God never said that to you or about you. Any advice on that? So first, any advice on guarding your mind? I tend to take things personal. I guess if somebody says something personal, if something happens to someone, I try to imagine myself in that situation, which can just scare me and birth fear. And I have to remind myself, God never said that. To you or about you, anyway. so guess guess entertaining pe what people think about you. I guess I best way. That's what I tell kids all the time. <clears throat> I told some kids today. I said when a kid calls you fat lip, do you got a fat lip? If someone says your mom is fat, your mom not fat. Why you get mad? Yeah. Because your anger or your upsetness or you being upset gives off the impression that you believe what they said. Yeah. Who do people say that I am? It was what Jesus said. Some people say you John the Baptist, some people say you Elijah, whatever they said. Then was it Peter? Peter said, you're the Christ. Yeah. He says, man, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. Whatever flesh and blood has to say about you and I negatively, it hasn't been revealed by God. Yeah. I don't care what people say that I am. Who am I? Yeah. When you know who you are, people can talk crazy. Like if someone if someone went on my Facebook wall, if, if someone went on the bottom of this video, forget him, he's a false teacher. I laugh at those comments. You really think you got the scoop on me? <laughs> you really audit my prayer time? Yeah. I laugh because I know it ain't true. Yeah. If you respond to it, now it's okay to be like, man, he's hating. Yeah, you nerves. have yeah, you're you human. Have, you're human. You're gonna be upset, but when you you shouldn't be upset longer than one minute. Yeah. Because you're gonna be like, why am I giving? The more you get upset, is the more you give that person's comments power over you, yeah. and now yeah. they become the recorder in your mind, and you begin to hear their words and their voices about what you do, and now their voice causes you to look at what you're doing as not valid. Yeah. That's why you never give people, that's why when these rappers and people and pastors and people, like, it's not easy. Because people's words can't affect you. Yeah. But if you don't got enough ammunition and enough understanding of who you are in your mind, you're going to always believe what they say. Yeah. If it ain't true, why you believe it? Yeah, just look at what God says. Yeah. Like, the, like, one thing I always think about is how our flesh What's like, what, like if somebody says something bad, our flesh is like snap. Yeah. yeah, our flesh is just saying that, but you're just like you're not operating from your flesh, you're operating from your spirit. So you have to understand that there's justifiable, what I like to say, justifiable inclinations. That my flesh, okay, so if somebody cut me off from traffic, there's an inclination in my flesh that's justified because one plus one just equal two to snap off. Mm -hmm. But, but. We walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah. So now I gotta take that back and say, okay, well, at least I didn't get hit. Yeah. At least. Oh, even if what they said about you is true, it's just true for now. Yeah. Anybody who thinks about their environment will eventually live beyond their current environment, yeah. right? And so it takes process because these kids, I'd be like, man, your mom not fat. I saw your mom. She dropped you off today. Why you let that kid make you upset? Yeah. It's because people want to prove themselves. Yeah. Or to seek vengeance. It's like, man, walking away still works. Even if everybody says, oh, you scared. No, I'm alive. I'm walking away. Right. Yeah. Like the Bible talks about fools a lot in the Proverbs. Like, like you, why entertain a fool? You're going to end up falling into their destruction. Don't debate nobody. If, if it ain't true, then keep it moving. Yeah. Because I promise you, 
I was picked on in high school, I was talked about in college, I was misunderstood in my 20s up to now. But nobody can argue with the fruit that I'm bearing. Yeah. Nobody can argue with how I really love God, because only I know that. Yeah. And those who actually got a clear sight. So, tell them Kid Rocks. Yep. Second part of the question. Any advice on being a friend of someone who doesn't know Christ? How to guard your heart, especially if that person is interested in you and you feel like you are too? Okay. Any advice on being be, being friend or befriending, uh, being a friend of someone who doesn't who doesn't know Christ, uh, doesn't know Christ? How to guard your heart, comma, <coughs> comma How to guard your heart, mm -hmm. especially if that person is interested in you and you feel like you are too? Oh, a boyfriend, girlfriend. A friend is interested in you? Yeah, a friend is, a friend is interested in you. Apparently, a friend oh, is being friends with you? Interested in, uh, someone is interested in you, but there you don't know Christ. How do you guard your heart from somebody who's interested in you, doesn't know Christ, but you're kind of interested in them as well? You got to understand why. You got to first ask yourself, why am I interested? First, you got to make sure that you're not trying to be captain to save them all, right? That's number one. And secondly, you got to make sure. That thing, that, that thing was like, I just drank on that thing. Boy, y'all heard that. Yeah, we're in the middle of the storm, but we Um What you got to understand is that you got to understand why do I want this friendship? It's not just physical attraction and lure. Sometimes it can be demonic attraction. Sometimes you can be like, I don't even know why I like this person. We all have been there in relationship with someone and we was like, why am I even here? Yeah. Or you look back like, why did I even date that person? First, you got to ask yourself, why am I interested in this person? Secondly, you got to say, you know what? Is there a benefit to this relationship? Is there a benefit to this friendship? I can be a friend, but my friendship is predicated on distance. Yeah. I can be a I could be an associate, but I'm not gonna be your friend. Yeah. I could be someone that you that you ask questions to in passing, but I'm not gonna allow you in my home. Mm -hmm. There's certain guidelines. In order, if you want to guard your heart, you gotta set guidelines. Yeah. You gotta be able to know who's who and where they need to be. We heard this many times. There's certain people in the in the street, you don't let them in your yard. Some people in your yard, you won't let them in your porch. You let your porch, you won't let them in your front in your front room. Some people let your front room, you won't let in your bedroom. So many people are giving street level people bedroom access and they wonder why they messed up in there. So what you gotta do is you gotta be first comfortable in being a friend of God and a friend of yourself. Yeah. You gotta be a friend of God and a friend of yourself before you can be a friend of someone else. Sometimes you gotta be your best friend and be like, you know what? Because of me and my's friendship, I can't be friends with you. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to affect my friendship with myself, my self care, my self love, my self uh, uh, being whole. Because if I become friend, you take time away from me. If I become friend with you, you take time away from my focus. Yeah. Like there's certain seasons where you can't be best friends with everybody because you're gonna be like, I need to focus on my book. I need to focus on this. You need a friend. You need a type of friend that's okay with you being gone. Yeah. That when you call them again, it's like y'all talk every day, which I ain't talked in months. You need friends who are pursuing their own agenda. But at the same time, if you know for a fact that person, they say something about not in love with God or something, not close with God, yeah. they ain't really a Christian. Yeah. How can two walk together else they be agreed? Don't be unequally yoked. It is never wise because it is not them that will be hurt. It's always the stronger calf who gets their neck broke. And then the second part, I kind of, kind of heart for a little bit because, man, I feel this. Said advice on learning to find joy in just Christ alone. Mm. In a lonely season, I'm 17 in college. Mm. And it's been a year since I gave my life to Christ and the hardest part has been letting people go, guarding my heart from mm. guys or not catching the wrong feelings or just not trying to fit in to get attention. Because I'm like, I know this is, this is because mm. you, because I felt this, mm. like, when I first gave my life back to Christ and I, all the friends left and you're just trying to find back and I remember crying in my bed because this is like this is what I remember specifically crying in my bed late at night realizing that yo like everybody left like I'm just, it's just me right now listen you know so I feel this let me let me tell you this from my heart you're talking to someone who's been this thing probably 12 10 12 years the journey's worth it you talking to a guy who loves his his alone time with God, who loves his alone time with himself. I can sit there and watch YouTube videos all day, chilling with my tea, my turmeric, with my cayenne pepper. You know what I'm saying? A little bit dash of honey. I'm I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. But in my initial journeys, it sucked. Yeah. 
When I got stripped away from cars I was thrown in my mom's room, I was embarrassed. Because this man who saw fire come down from heaven and sitting in his mom's house, wondering if he was ever called. And then having to deal with people. See, you're 17. You gotta understand that people in your age bracket are not mature up here, are probably not mature here. So what you're going through is what I went through. Because sometimes you, you're so deep with God, you, you love God, but you're still in a conforming, confusing culture. A culture where everyone is like, these are the rules. Get a boyfriend. Get a girlfriend. What's your degree? Oh, that's cool. Oh, you graduating? Oh, listen, I got talked about. I got called gay because I didn't have sex. I got called all kinds of names. I got called, I got called stupid stuff. I got called, you will never do this. I had people talk crazy. And you know where they are? Not where I am. It doesn't mean I'm better than them, but it's just saying that people who think improperly at a certain age will have a and will have an improper return. That's why I'm telling you right now. I don't care how alone you feel right now. Stay about your father's business. Jesus felt alone, I'm sure. I'm sure Jesus was like, dang, nobody understood me, but it didn't keep him from fulfilling his task. I know you're gonna say right now, but Josh, that's God. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of you. It is not going to be easy. You're going to feel alone. But when you have the mind of Christ around earthly minds, you're going to always feel out of place. But if you keep staying focused and staying true, listen, I'm going to make sure I read this last one. Advice on learning to find joy in just Christ. First, first off, you got to find joy in what Christ did for you. Yep. you got to find joy in the fact that you were saved at 16, 17. You got to find joy in the fact that, man, he loves you more than anyone on this planet. He loves you more than the person who loves you the most on this earth times a billion. You also got to understand that what he saved you from, what he's endeavoring to save you from, what is he, what is he sanctifying you into, how he's using your surroundings as, as, as tools to help shape you. When you have the right perspective, yes, it feels alone, but when you have your own cause, man, when I got that, when I, I wrote that book Unplugged, I was alone. World War Me, I was alone. Purpose singles, I had some people around then. But 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 I was so caught up in doing what I'm supposed to that whether people was there or not, I was still good. Now were there moments when I struggled with abandonment and I struggled with people leaving? Yes, but I cried that out to God. I vented to him. I got it out of my system. Like God help me to see joy in what I'm going through. Yeah, Next. That's where I sit. Advice on learning to find joy in just Christ alone in the lonely season. I'm 17 in college and it's been a year since I gave my life to Christ. And the hardest part has been letting people go, guarding my heart from guys or not catching the wrong feelings or just not trying to fit in to get attention. Listen, they can't fit into what you already fit in. That's it. You and God, y'all fit. The rest of them can't fit. And that's okay. God's going to always remove what can't fit. That's like you wearing a size 2 and you wear a size 7. It's going to be uncomfortable. And trying to fit people in your life as you walk in this journey is going to be very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes, you're going to want a boyfriend, but listen. Uncle Josh right here, talking to you. I ain't coach no more. I ain't, I ain't Mr. Ezzy. I'm Uncle Josh right now. I'm putting you on game. You don't know nobody to love. <laughs> you don't know nobody to love right now. God ain't going to bring you no man right now. I'm sorry, you're 17. He's not. There's people who's 30 who ain't ready for marriage. Jesus was about his father's business at 12. He wasn't thinking about no marriage. But let it go there. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, you're 17, yeah. enjoy your youth. Because when like people spend their 30s to try to clean up what they messed up in their 20s, people in their 40s are trying to clean up what they messed up in their 30s. Mm -hmm. You're not even 20 yet. You're 17 in college? You already have the curve. And just get involved as well. Just get involved. Get plugged in with like-minded people. If you can't find like-minded people, then you just got to thug it out. You got to stick it through. It's not going to be easy, but journal your experience. Vent often. Find you a good Bible teaching church. Find your purpose. Find out your purpose and your passion is what you want to solve in this world. It's the people group you want to help. Find that. Find a community group in your cause that gets you plugged in and stay productive. Don't stay busy. Get productive and you'll find out all that stuff these people do in our vein. And when you get 30, you're going to find me somewhere when I'm 40 some years old. You're going to be like, Coach Josh, you're right. All those people who wasted their life in their 20s and their late teens 
lives are horrible right now. Yeah. Trust me, I'm 32 years old. Take it from me. When you do things God's way, I'm a virgin now. I'm getting married to another virgin woman. I'm not saying I'm better, but when you do things God's way, I don't got to worry about no STD. I don't got to worry about no babies. I don't got to worry about nothing. When you do things God's way, God has a way of making your way straighter. Amen. And it may not be, a, I'm not sitting there saying you'll be better, but when you do things the right way, you don't have to worry about getting fired from experiences, fired from opportunities, or having, I want God's original plan, not his redemptive plan. I only want one redemptive plan, and that's redeeming of my soul. Yeah. But I don't want him to have to redeem my marriage that wasn't of his. To redeem this, I got one redemptive plan. The rest is the original plan.